Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mows. In today's episode we're going to be doing a video on uh, an Atco Baron Mole. This is a 17SE version but this will also cater for your 14Ss um, and your 20Ss at the same time. So uh, quite a common um, problem on these machines is the gearing tends to go. Now I picked up a, a 17 um, uh, ES a little while ago and uh, I deemed the gears to be no good so I've purchased off of a company called Garden Hire Spares in the UK and I think it's around about 30, 40 quid somewhere in there. I've got um, the main white gear, I've also got two pink gears to go along with it and also got the pinion gear as well. I've also ordered new belts as well for it as well. I'm hoping that this will solve the drive issue on it. Uh, on the white gear um, on the cylinder and the intermediate gear I have noticed there's a bit of a gap between and that they may be striking rather than actually uh, running alongside. So today I'm going to do a little video on how to change the pinion gear and the uh, cylinder gear in both intermediates on these um, cylinder mowers and then also I'm going to try and chuck a new set of belts on for good measure as well. That way this machine will be um, good to go. I have ordered another um, battery for it because the battery I've got is on charge, it's not doing anything and the starter does turn but it doesn't engage. So I don't think there's enough throw in the battery to, to engage the starter on it. So once that's up and running, that'll be good to go. So uh, hopefully um, we'll have no problems, get these gears fitted and uh, you can watch this video and do it yourself at home. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two I'm on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's sort out this ATCO gear problem and drive issue. Okay, so here is the ATCO. This is the 17SE. I do also have an ATCO uh, 14S down here as well, which I've worked on. Uh, no, that one I haven't worked on. That one's actually broken. I've sold another one since then. Uh, this one has had a full service done to it. A uh, new spark plug. It's had a, a new air filter. All change been done. New fuel lead as well. It wasn't actually revving up and down because the car breath needed cleaning. I will be doing a separate video on, on how to clean one of these carburetors as well, the Tillerson carburetors. It wasn't throttling up and down as it should do. I've also oiled up the, um, the cables as well, so they all now run freely. So uh, that's that. But anyway, we're here today to discuss how to, um, or how I change the um, blades, uh, the cogs on these uh, little Atcos. And you would find this because your gearing, uh, when you go to put it into drive, it either grinds, makes a noise like that, or, or something similar. Let me turn that throttle down. I've got a little bit of a fuel leak, but I have just run this machine, so that might be why it was on choke a little while ago. They tend to flood quite well when you put one to choke. So you've got four bolts to remove. Um, they're Allen bolts um, to remove here. I think I'm actually missing one on this one. <coughs> one there, and then one down here, and one on the other side, but so I think I'm missing that one. I need to find a spare bolt for that at some point. Uh, this machine uh, came to me as not running full stop and since then I've actually got it, got it running with a carburetor clean and as I just said in bits and pieces. So it is now running. So let's remove the cover and what you'll find you've got down here is you've got um, your cylinder gear which is a white one here, cylinder pulley and then your drive pulley at the back. This is your tensioner for your cylinder and your tensioner for your drive. So if I activate the drive, you'll see this one move. And if I activate the, um, the cylinder, which actually at the moment I can't go wait for a spare part for that, um, that will cut the cylinder in. So the, at the moment the cylinder won't be working, but it's for drive that is particularly graunchy. Okay, <clears throat> so very simply, first thing you want to do is to, a 10 mil, is to remove this, um, what's that on there, is that a 3 eighths? That's a 3 eighths. I was working on something else earlier on this morning. Let's put a 10 on it. A 10 mil will remove this little tiny nut just there. We'll loosen that off. And put all your parts to one side, out of the way. This little tiny guard has got a little tiny um, hook which comes off together in one piece like so, okay? Remove that, put that there. Now your pulley will now just, just slide off very gently, come all the way off, and off comes one of your belts, like so. 
This one here um, is, a, is a normal handed thread, so it goes anti-clockwise to undo it, okay? You can use an impact gun or something along that line. Um, but what you can do, if you don't have the impact tools, is that gonna fit that? No. Um, if you don't have the impact tools, I think that's uh, a qu three quarter, yeah, three quarter inch. You can get your ratchet or something similar. I tend to use a breaker bar, <clears throat> nothing too hefty. And what you can do is, because you can't hold this without this machine spinning, if you pull this pulley back ever so slightly, just about here, there's a little tiny bracket. And what you can do is you can put your Allen key through there so it catches on the other side of a bracket, okay? And then you can then get your, um, your socket on and very gently turn that over without spinning this with, with the Allen key in place. Once it's loosened off enough, you can then spin that uh, quite freely, okay? But without doing, if you just put a span on it, you you actually just just drive the machine forward like so, like it's doing now. Okay, so just put your Allen key in, lock it off, and you better undo it. And that's, and that's a normal handed thread. Okay, and that's actually the, the 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 nut you're taking off is actually the bolt of the pinion gear. So you remove the washer, put it over somewhere separate. And then this pulley here will just slide off. You need to slip the belt off behind it. That's no biggie, we can do that. Slide your pulley off, okay. And then here is your actual pinion gear um, that you can see. You're gonna need a uh, Phillips screwdriver to get onto there, which I've lost mine, here's mine. And if you just undo these three top um, Phillips screws or bolts, Undo those, like so. It comes out, there it does. And that bottom one as well. So move the free. Like so. Take them off. <clears throat> Gently re retract this bush bearing and your pinion gear will come out in one go. And there's your pinion, okay? So that can now slide all the way out. So keep this way it is. And that's your old pinion gear. I have a new pinion gear. I have a new pinion gear here. So what I wanna do, I wanna inspect both, J just, just for wear. And I can see that this is actually a little bit bigger in diameter. And there are actually some, some nicks being taken off of the inside edge, which is where they fail generally just on, on there, okay? So this is well, well, uh, well worn. I'm gonna get some lithium grease. <clears throat> That's carburet spray. A little bit of lithium grease. Now inside here, there's actually a, um, another gear, okay, which will involve you undoing these three screws and three the other side, and your roller will then drop out. There's actually a, what we call a ring gear inside here which is attached to the actual roller itself. So sometimes they fail, and that may be the case with this machine. Uh, but until I, uh, until I inspect it and try it, I won't know. So a little bit of lithium grease goes onto that bushing just to help it run. And all we're then gonna do is slide that into place and then do up those um, free retaining screws again. Just snug them in to begin with. There's one. There's two. And there's three. So snug them in so they're well seated. No need to hang on them. Just well seat them. Super job. That's nice and snug in there compared to what the other one was like. That, that was uh, quite well, quite well worn. Now I have found with some copy parts that when you go to um, put this on, on here, on this pulley, sometimes they don't fit. And what you may have to do is just with a very, very small file is just take off some of the burring. Okay. And mine may be the same. Otherwise you're gonna do the, do the threads in. Uh, mine's gonna go, okay. So that goes on there like so. And then you, all you then do is you get your washer and your nut and you just put that on there and do that on there like so, okay? So that one's very, very simple to do, okay? 
I'll do that up a bit later on, but make sure that's done up nice and tight. And again, all you've got to do is just get your um, your Allen key, put it into just behind that bracket, and then just do that nut up like so. That's no, no biggie, okay? With that one done, you can then move on to this little gear here, um, which in comparison to its, to its new one, I'll put it on like for like. There's not actually a great deal of wear on this cog, but I can see a little tiny bit just missing, not a great deal, but I'm gonna renew it anyway because I can then sell the machine on as, uh, as brand new gears. To renew the gear on this one, it's very, very simple. They have three holes just here, here, and here. And all you wanna do is get a flat-headed screwdriver and just very, very gently prise up this gearing just so you can get the screwdriver in. Like so. And eventually it will just lift straight off of its housing. They're being held on by some uh, roll pins, okay, which we're going to need to retain. So that's your new, um, your, your old cog. And when you get your new cog, it already comes with the bushing inside, but it doesn't come with the um, these pins. So you're going to need to punch these pins out. Now, what I recommend doing is lining it up to where it needs to be, give them that a tap on the bench, okay. And then once that's tapped in, you can then drift out the pins on this side. And they go in round about three quarters length weight in, okay? They don't go all the way flush. They go about three quarters weight in. So just literally drift these pins out and put them into this hole here, push them through to about three quarters, and then we can then install those. Okay, so all I've done with these is literally just punched um, them out the old one, put it just up against the vise, punch the whole the old roll pins out, and then got the new gear, uh, offered them in, and just gently just tapped them down with a hammer, to about three quarters way through. That's all I've done. All you then want to do is literally just offer this onto the new housing and with a hammer, very lightly just tap these back into place. And it can be a bit tight. So just go gentle. And what you're looking for is a nice uniform fit. And then what you want to do once you punch them down is to make sure that they're down flush and also that the roll pins are not all hanging out here because you may have to punch these back through a bit more just so they seat well, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna transfer over to my soft blow hammer. Now you may not have all these tools to hand, okay? Uh, I do. So just use, use your, use your uh, uh, you know, best you can sort of thing. If you need to put a cloth over it or a bit of wood, then do that. And all I'm doing is just tapping these down home. That needs to be all the way down because otherwise um, the pulley will sit will sit slightly drunk. So I've just put them down in the vise, uh, just on top of the vise, and just tap them down home. And my roll pins are exactly three quarters um, um, through this way, a quarter quarter just showing on the inside. And that's how you fit that intermediate gear like so. So that's now done. However. We're not out the woods yet because we've still got to do this little tiny gearing um, all the way down here. Let me bring it down a bit closer so you can see a bit, bit better. Okay, so I pulled down a little bit closer onto the uh, onto the machine so you can see a, a bit more than, than what I'm seeing as well. Uh, this gear here, you want a, a quite a fine um, flat-headed screwdriver. And this is held on by a C-clip. And all you do is get your screwdriver in. Just go a bit careful with these because they have a tendency to ping out and jab you right in the eyeball. So just take it out very gently. Watch where it goes. Don't drop it. Put it under one side, and this gearing will just slide straight off of that of that uh, bush just there. Okay, the that gear I already have, and um, there's nothing else to uh, to swap over. For that it's literally like for like. Now what I was finding with this gear is when I put it on <clears throat> into place. Let me just line it up without spilling my coffee. Is that you can see how much slack there is, and these teeth are darn near passing each other. Okay. So that's the reason why I was changing this one. And if you look, you've got quite a bit of wear just on, on these teeth just here. There's a bit of wear there. If I put it up like for like, yeah, I can see there's a definite size difference between the two. So now I offer this gear into place. <coughs> we'll, want a bit, we'll want a bit of lube, as they all do. Let's put a bit of lube on there. <coughs> you can use just three and one, three and one, or anything like that. I just use a bit of a lithium grease, white grease. It will be a bit of a tighter fit because it is new. 
but once you've got it into place, that, that now is already fitting better. But this gear is also worn as well. Okay, so we need to adjust that, change that one over as well. So now we've got to replace this white gear <coughs> on this uh, machine, and that's very simply done. Right, I've had to back you off a touch. I did hear the voice of somebody rather little coming in. You haven't seen him for a little while. Where is he? Are you there? Oh, there you are, my little boy. Got your mixed mother's t-shirt on, have you? Hey, you guys. Hey, guys. Not seen him for a little while. He's been indoors with mummy. How are we doing? Uh, we're doing a Bound Moral 17 SE today. How are we doing? Hey, have I got it going? It is running, but um, I'm replacing my gears. Is it okay? It is okay, yeah. I come in? You can come in, mate, yeah. Where's mummy? Uh, okay. She's in the garden, is she? Good. Yeah. Because we're all uh, we're also isolating, so I'll put you here. My little rider boy's just turned up. You're not seen him for a little while, have you? Daddy. Yes, buddy. How's the mower going? How's the mower going? Yeah. It's go it's going all right, mate. Yeah, I'm getting there. Right. Um. So what you need to do with this 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 little white gear here is actually a left-handed thread. So to loosen it, this one here, to loosen it, you need to you need to tighten it. If that makes we're any tight. sense. Yeah. So what I'm, what I like to do is get a, a soft-handled um hammer. Hold it. And put it into the cylinder. Okay. No, no, Daddy, hold it. Daddy. Yes, buddy. Do you... I reckon these guys are missed you, Riley. What's that? Uh, this is called a breaker bar. What did I say? What's what? Say the sticker. Wall, bro. Is it YouTube? That was from my mate, um, Steve Small Engine Saloon, wasn't it? And got that from you. Dead? Yeah. So, um, to remove this, um, this one here, you're going to want a socket, and that's a 24 mil. Okay, to go onto there. Put that onto there. Hold this, um, this hammer. And then literally, let it take up its biting position where it wants to go no further, there. He's wrong. And then we can then crack this, this one this off, is which is well on there. There it goes. Crack that one off. Don't give it too much physic because you, you don't want to bend the cylinder. Daddy? Yes, buddy. It's so extreme. Yeah. So now we can now remove this white gear. Is it moving? It is moving, mate. Yeah, Daddy got it off. Hmm. So, so that's cool. We can now remove that one and give it a little bit of a clean. Clean, clean, clean. Clean, clean, clean. Well, how are you watch it going? Say again, buddy. How are you party okay? What party? How are everyone? Is it okay? Yeah, I, I, Riley's asking, is everyone okay? Yeah, so what I'm going to do now, I know you haven't seen these, I bought these the other day. What's these that? are only £4. Nice little sort of vintage set of um, oil cans. Oh, is so it a nice it? bit of maintenance lube goes onto there. Is it much it? Um, I bought one just the other day, Riley boy. Yeah. And we've got a, we've got a new white gear here. It's okay. And we're going to measure that up for argument's sake. Yeah, that's a little bit worn, this one. Not a great deal, but the teeth are battered. So we're going to, remo we're going to renew that one. And to tighten this one up, you have to slide it onto the gearing, and then you have to, um, you then have to loosen this one to tighten it. If that makes any sense, that's actually the wrong way. Be careful, Daddy. Make sure you put your nut on the outside, don't forget. Be careful. I will be careful, mate, yeah. So you loosen this one to tighten it, if that makes any sense. Now, what you're going to have to do now is drop your hammer down, like so. Wow, my Because when we do this one up, uh, which is back to front, um, it will then tighten, okay? So that goes onto there. We get our breaker Good. bar. And we start to tighten it. Now, this, you don't have to hang on these, okay? Because they're left-handed threaded, they're not going to go too far. So just make sure it's up nice and tight. And, th and that, that should do you. A little dabber do you. But, but I do. A little dabber do you, yeah. Daddy? So now, yes, buddy? What do you first? Well, I'm trying to do a video. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to do. But you, you've not been down for a while, so... Uh, daddy? Yes, buddy? You should put a bit of oil. Yeah. So I'm going to put a little, a little, a little bit of uh, oil on there. Is it wet? Yeah, a little bit of oil on that one there. It should be. And now we can get our little intermediate gear well, magic. to sit on in. Now. Like so. Now. All right, buddy, no worries. Bye, Daddy. Yeah, tell our boy. Bye, guys. Yeah, bye, guys. Bye, that got onto there. Now, I am experiencing a little bit of slack coming off here. I don't think this cartridge is all the way down. Is I think is the issue. I think that's a thing. Because that gear is still not it's a, it's, it's it's okay. It will it will turn that cylinder. But there is still quite a bit of slack there. Not as much as the old one. 
So what I'm going to do before I go any further is I'm going to inspect this cylinder to make sure that this cylinder is all the way home and down. Um, it, it appears to me like it wants to come just down a thread. So I'm going to go back in. And you won't have to do this to your, to your machine, hopefully. But mine just feels it's not, it's not sat all the way down as far as I would like the cylinder to be. So I'm going to loosen that back off. I'm going to have a general inspection to see what's actually occurring here. There's a bit of a gap just here. It doesn't seem to be central to me. It seems to be like this, the cylinder wants to come further down the cassette. Now, it, it's only bolted here, fixed here, uh, by, by two bolts. That's what actually holds, holds the cylinder down home. But it does appear that it wants to be down just a touch more, about three millimeters, not a lot. So that these two gears will then interlock uh, better. At the moment, there, there's a little tiny gap there, and uh, that will eventually wear your um, your gearing out. So let me just inspect that quickly, and I'll come back to you once I've done that, and then we can then move on. Okay, so I've done a bit of investigation work, and luckily for me, I actually have a um, a spare machine to go off of, which is which is always very very nice indeed. Now, um, as I say, I, I was surmising that this wasn't quite right the teeth are just literally just biting by about a mil and a half if that and it's not right on the other bow mole they're well in there now we've got some welds here and a weld here that weld has no business there and a weld down here that has no business there either no there's nothing down here but there's a hole just here okay I looked on my other bow moral and uh, let me show you guys so this is a, a bow mold down here I've got. I've got a little tiny bolt just here with a slider. And that gives you the adjustment on this here, which will push your gear to and fro, okay? A little bolt there, and the, there's a weld here, which is here, which I can see. Um, there's a weld over here, which is that one there. So this is not only um, not welded in place, but someone's actually been in here, and they've, this bit's actually broken off. This plate's actually snapped at some point and um, they've done away with this bit here and just welded it shut. So that's an issue for me, for, for me to sort out another day. Um, however, I have been able to, I've got an old Suffolk punch out here. There's uh, my Suffolk puncho. There it is, and there you go. There's a part I'm after. Uh, got, the, got the same spike, it's got a hole up the top. Um, it's got the second gear cog and it's got a hole down here as well. Okay, so I might, in another video, uh, take this off and put this one on or just buy another part for it one or the other but I'm guessing this one's going to fit the same as this because all these cogs are all interlocked so I'm guessing it's all going to fit but anyway uh, that's an issue I've got the, the fiddle fairies have struck but someone's done a really good job on that um, with regards to putting a plate in welding it painting it the same color it all looks factory um, but that gear cog is just not quite striking and I'm not happy with it um, and on the other on the other um device I've got down here, my other bow moral, um, the gears are actually uh, well well sat, like so. But on this, they're like they're like that. And that's why these teeth these cogs have been have been mucking about. So that's a problem I've got for another video. So if you've got the same problem as me for that, I should do a, a separate video on that. But for now we'll continue with how to change the uh, the the um the bits and pieces on this one and then what I'll do is I'll come back at a later date and upgrade this before I even start to run it up but that, that was definitely an issue I had. As it goes I can't even do the cylinder because I'm waiting for a part for the top of a cylinder anyway so uh, we carry on regardless and then I can take it all apart a bit later on and we go from there. So uh, with your um, your white cog now in place we can now do that one up as we were before and like I said, don't forget, it's got to be um, loosened to be tightened. Not my big hammer now. It's over there, like right down here. So I'll get me my big hammer, put it into the cylinder, just to hold it into place. And we're going to loosen this, which will tighten it. Into place, that's nice and tight. So we're happy with that. That can, hammer can now come back out. Okay, now's a good time. We want to change this um, this drive belt, don't we? 
this drive belt, um, it isn't broken. It's a little bit worn. And all you've got to do is undo the nut at the top on here. Let me bring it a bit closer on. It has sort of thrown me now having to do this repair. So it has sort of just um, mucked with my mojo a little tiny bit. Let's get you up in the air a bit so you can see a bit more. That's better. Um, you've got to now undo this one here um, to get your to get your uh, your belt off because um, there's two guide pins on the back here. Okay, so you need to undo this one just here. Let me get that done. Two ticks. Right, to undo this one here uh, will be a quarter bolt and it's a normal handed thread. I'm using an impact gun. You can just try and use um, a normal ratchet, put something through here just to hold it down. There's another hole there. Uh, I can use an impact though and just, oh, other way, Mick. And loosen that one off. That'll loosen that one off. Like so. And then you can then retract your pulley and then your belt will then just slip off amongst that with not too many dramas. Move the space for a bit. That's it, now that comes. I'll go and fetch my new belt for the drive. Now I looked online and um, I asked, um, actually rang up Garden Hire Spares and they said uh, it's actually the same set of belts, we only list one, which is drive and clutch, which is the same belt. So that can now go into place. Uh, Garden Hire Spares have got a part number here, which is a Z28 10x7-10LI. Okay, that's the, uh, the only number code that's on there. That goes into there. Put this part of the pulley back on. Get it going, that's it, onto there. A little spacer goes on. And just slide your belt in between the, the rollers first off. It's a bit stiff. You could do a little bit of, a little bit of love. Not too much, that's where the belt's got to go, so. Let's just start that to, to move backwards and forwards a bit. What come off, it come off of it, isn't it? There it goes. Put that onto there. In fact, I might just put a little bit of my old uh, maintenance lube on there. It don't want a lot. More than enough. Put that back on. That goes on. Push your belt up and push that all the way down and then push your, your belt back on. Your spacer goes back on. Then your pulley goes back on. Then your washer. Then your nut. And that's the... Uh, a drive belt done and changed. I'm going to zip that up with my impact, but you can use hand tools. No biggie, and then we can just slip that belt over top. Okay, so um, with the white cog now done up, the new drive belt has been fitted. We've got to tighten this pulley up yet um, to secure that into place. Uh, we can now refit this um, this C clip into place here. Now, bearing in mind, I sort of come back to this to do the um, change this part here on mine because uh, uh, the old fiddle fairies have been in. Get your C-clip, put, put a flat headed screwer behind it and just push very, very gently and it goes straight on in one go like so. Just always have your thumb over the top in case it does decide to jump off okay, and bite you. So go careful of that. Uh, next thing I want to do is get your um, your cylinder um, cog, which is the one which we put the, uh, the three pins in earlier on. Now that very simply just goes over the top of these two, bites into place there. Okay, and now we want to get our, our another new belt, which is this one here. Put it over the uh, the pulley first. Is that a new one? Yeah, that's a new one, yeah. Exactly the same belt as the other one. And that's gonna come over. Now, what, why I said not to uh, not to do it first off is to, to tighten this one up, is you may not get it over this top one here. So slacken this one off, take your pulley off, mount it on the pulley, mount it on this pulley, come up through, and then just turn it so it goes into place like so and put your nut and your washer onto there and just make sure that it's sitting in all of the roller guides uh, there's a little, a little pin just here uh, where it's got to sit on so make sure it's sitting in there do that one up push it into place so we're happy with that everything is where it needs to be all i've got to do now is to got to nip up this one 
that I put that into place. We're happy with that. That's all good. And then got to tighten this one up as well by hand, no problem. Then just got to fit this um, little tiny guard on. And this guard will sit on this belt on this belt cover like so. Goes over the two. Very, very gently. Sits up onto there. And you just do that little 10 mil up. Just being a bit of a bit of a swine there it goes. Little tiny 10 mil up, do that one up. <clears throat> nice and tight. Whip it up with a with a socket, and there you go. That's how you change your two pink cogs, your white cog, your pinion gear, and your drive belts on a Balmoral 17S, 14S, 20S, or any Suffolk Punch or Quokar cylinder mowers that have a very similar setup to this. Very, very simple, very easy, apart from the fact I could take this all back off again just to change it one part a bit later on. Okay, so there you go. That's how you do the um, gears and belts on a um, Atco B14, B17, 20, um, any Suffolk Punch or Quokar sort of similar setup. As long as you've got the white and pink gears, that's how you do that. However, I now have to go back and I'll do another video on uh, the bodge uh, that they've done. I've looked at the, the lower pink gear and it's actually sat on sat on the screw with and it's, it's not right. So I'm gonna try and take that uh, long part off and uh, pinch a bit off of that Suffolk punch to see if that fits. If it doesn't fit, then I shall order a new part for the bow mold, but I have got a part there, hopefully it will fit. And once, I, once that's fitted, I can then adjust the pink intermediate gear so it sits firmly into the white gear and then that will then drive my cylinder with no issues. But at the moment, the uh, bow mower is still off the road. It drives fine, but um, I can't do a cylinder until I get those gears right. Otherwise, it's just going to chew those, those gears right up. Um, I was a bit suspecting because the, the cylinder itself is actually in A1 condition. It is fantastic condition. Um, so I'm not quite sure why um, anyone has done that. It looks to be like a professional job to me. It hasn't just been bodged. Um, it's, it's done a, a professional job, but there's no adjustment to be had. And you've got to have adjustment on those gears. As the gears wear down, you have to just, just turn them in a touch just so they bite better. And then you can get the full use out of the gear. So as it goes, the other two pink gears I've got, will still probably be able to use those on, on other projects as long as I have the adjustment. But, there you go. If this is your first time watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button and whack the bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two. I'm on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy.